Hi, Andreas from Total here. Now, I'm constantly impressed with how fast the no-code space is moving. We're seeing a ton of new to cool tool com <laughs> cool tools coming out all the time. Um, and it's really clear that the next generation of no-code tools are going to take it to a whole new level. Uh, the one I've been looking at recently is called FastGen. And this is maybe more on the side of low-code uh, backend as a service uh, platform that you can do some really cool stuff with. So I thought today we'll build an application using FastGen and Toddle. So today I thought we would build a recipe app using FastGen and ChatGPT. So I'm going to log into FastGen. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Oops. And we're going to create a new API endpoint. Um, and this, we're going to say create here because we actually want to use a post request, even though technically we're fetching a response. But that's also how, um, that's also the request uh, GPT expects. So we'll, we'll keep it the same. So here we're going to call that a recipe. Uh, for authentication, we're going to make it public. And we're going to give it a name of recipe. Um, get an AI recipe. Oops. There we are. Um, and we're going to save that. And the next thing we need to do is we need to actually call um, GBT to get a response. So um, again, we're using uh, ChatGBT from OpenAI. And if we you look at their API references, in their um, documentation. We can see to do a chat completion, we need to call this endpoint. So I'm gonna copy that directly. Copy just this bit out. Um, we're gonna put that in. We're gonna create a new, where do we have? HTTP request, drag that in, and put that in the URL, change it to a post. And we're just gonna call this a GBT, or chat GBT, right? Um, and then inside this conf uh, request, we're going to configure it and we need to provide it with a body. For now, I'm going to copy this one. Oh, there we are. Um, paste it in here. And we are just going to change this to use GPT-4 because it's faster and better. Um, and here we can see that we've got some messages here in the um, in the example from um, ChatGPT. And actually, we want to grab, and we're just going to cut this out because we only need the one message from the user. That's the one we have. So if you're doing an actual chat back and forth, and, and we could add that later, uh, you'll send like the list, the history of all the messages. But in this case, uh, we are just sending one. Um, and this is going to be create a simple recipe for, um, and then we need to add in what the input is. So in um, what we actually want to to create the recipe for, right? So in um, in um, Fastgen, we can use this key here to insert a variable, and we're going to say inputs body. So input is the first. Uh, uh, input and when we call it right and in its body it should get and then we're just going to say dish here um, so if this is going to be replaced with whatever we put in the body's dish parameter when property when, when we're sending the request uh, right that should be good then we need to add authentication uh, actually let's just add type application json because in, in the API reference, it asked us to do that as well here. And then here we need to add this author, authorization header. So that's basically so uh, ChatGPT knows we're allowed to do this, right? And we can actually do that here just by, say, bearer token in in Fastin. We could also add an authorization header, but this is a little bit easier. Um, and then in uh, our API, we're going to go to our personal account, view API keys, create a new one, call it yum GPT. And then I'm going to create a new secret key and copy this. And yes, I will be deleting this key after the video and replacing it with a new one. Uh, since you don't ever want your private keys to be shown to anyone, right? 
Uh, so we're going to go in here and we're going to paste it right here. And this is kind of also why you need something like FastGen to work with Toddle because you don't want to be pasting this key inside a variable in your Toddle application because that'll be public to any user who sees it. So now all the users of your app actually has your secret GPT key. We don't we don't want that. Um, so by using FastGen here, we actually eliminate that security issue, right? So this should be quite good. We're going to save this one. And then we're going to add a, uh, where did we go? Response. Here we are. Success response at the end, right? Um, oh, here we are. Drag that in as a success response. And in that body, we're going to put in, we're just going to take, I think, uh, and put in um, the steps, chat, GPT outputs. And then we need to add dot body at the end and that's going to send the body of the chat gpt res response so it's saying make this a cpu request and send the response back to me right so let's save that and now let's go and try and debug this i'm going to go in here and now i need to add my dish parameter in here and we're going to say mm, omelet let's go and test this It's taking a little while. That sounds about right. It's doing the um, the prediction or the uh, AI in the background. And we got a response. Let's have a look at what the success. It says uh, we've got a, some choices here. You always get that from, from, from the chat GPT AI. And we've got a message and it says ingredients, four eggs, salt to taste, pepper taste. Uh, yep, yeah, pepper to taste. It looks about right, uh, as far as I can see. Uh, so uh, we're gonna call that a success, go out from debug, and then we need to deploy. We need actually to create this. Um, we're just gonna call this success, because then we can now deploy. Deploy to live. And now when we go look at our APIs, here is our recipe API. So now that we've set up our backend with Fastin, let's go and build a front end with Toddle. So I've got a project here called YumGPT, and I'm just gonna call it init, my first branch. Um, and we're gonna go and edit that. And so what I want in this case is, uh, we're gonna change the title to YumGPT. And then, um, We'll leave this, um, get delicious AI recipes. Um, and then in here, we are gonna go and add a form. Um, and we don't need most of these things, so we're gonna cut them out. Uh, oh, not the input, that was the one we did need. Um, and then we're just gonna fix the layout up a little bit so we'll have it here we've got some margin on this we need to reduce right so we want this sort of inline form here um, and right here we're going to change the placeholder to um, what recipe do you want to make um, right and then uh, we'll change this time this one to generate Right, um, and this is type submit. That's all perfect. So um, then we'll add a variable to bind to this input. So we have a place where we store the input value. We're gonna call it a dish, just like this dish. And we're gonna start it out with nothing, like an empty string. And we're gonna bind our input to that variable. So now we can type um, tikka masala. Uh, for example, into this, and uh, our dish will update with that value. So the next step is actually when we submit this form, we want to um, go and call that API we just created. So we're going to go and create a new API called uh, recipe. Then we're going to go back to Fastin, and here we can copy our uh, URL, and we're just going to paste that straight into Toddle. We're going to change that to a post because that that's what we said we wanted to be. 
And down here on in body, we're going to take this and we're going to create an object because what we said we wanted in Fastgen is an object with a property called dish on it. So we're going to say dish and change this to dish, right? There we go. Um, and then on the form, when we submit this, we're going to add a submit event. Um, there we are, form, submit. And here we're going to call our recipe. And we're not, we don't need to do anything on success or anything like that right now because we'll just listen for when there's data and then update the URL, right? So let's here, let's just try this to actually see the data coming back. So that'll be, make it easier to build the next step. So I'm going to go here. I put in Tikka Masala. I'm going to press generate. I don't expect anything to happen because we haven't told the UI to change in any way. Um, but let's have a look at our recipe API here. Um, we are getting nothing. Let's try and do that again. If I press submit. Ah, now we've got a ton of data. So now that we have that available, let's go and add that into our site. So we will just add here another, I think we'll just add a paragraph. Um, or maybe we'll add, let's add a div that to sort of uh, put that in. We'll add heading to court um, recipe four. And then we'll just, we're just going to duplicate this text because then we can add here as a formula recipe for dish. And we'll just add a space here. Boop. Um, and we want this to have a margin top. Um, oh, no, here we are. Margin top of, let's say, uh, 16 pixels, 32 pixels. Yeah. And then we actually only want to show, we only want to show this one if there's uh, data in our API recipe, right? So when, before we load it, before we load the recipe, we want, we won't see any, any of this, right? And then in P, we're going to grab in the uh, recipe API data, then choices, and then the first one. So by default, it doesn't send multiple choices. You can tell GPT to give you choices if you want. <coughs> We're perfectly fine just grabbing whatever the first one has. And then we grab out message and content, right? So now we can see that actually prints out the whole recipe here as it should. So that's kind of perfect. Uh, let's add some styling. We're going to say you're going to be with uh, 800. That's a bit much. Let's try and set it uh, 700 pixels. Uh, and we'll add a max with... Um, a max width of 90%. Um, and then, yeah. That looks pretty good. So when we search, let's go and try this. Uh, I'll just refresh and we can test it again. Uh, we're going to say, and I want a hamburger. Oops. We hit enter and absolutely nothing happens we're just waiting a long time that's why we should probably add a loading indicator then there we are okay so this was a quick demo of how we can combine local tools like fast End and total to build something really cool and really quickly um in this case a nice and useful uh, recipe app for um using chat gpt um and again fast End here is really key because we need to have that secret key stored in a place on a server somewhere where it's not accessible to our users. So we sort of control what kind of requests they can actually make. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. We've got more videos coming. So remember to subscribe. If you haven't tried uh, Fasten yet, go and check it out. If you haven't tried Total yet, definitely check it out. And I hope to see you in the next one.